We're checking out Mike Yup's uh, audiobook, Unsuccessful Thug. Um, it's pretty good, man. This is the part where he talks about him realizing he wasn't a street dude. Let's uh, go ahead and check out this uh, audio book, and um, I'm going to come back with my reaction. Hit the thumbs up gang button, guys, and thank you guys for watching. Charles on me as well. Appreciate it. That's like a damn stewardess. Anyway, let me just play the video. Hey, Asher. To friends from the neighborhood pissed you're not in here by your right name? Sorry. Giving you fake names was easier than testing statutes of limitations. Hmm. You'll see that I couldn't shut up when I was robbing a drug dealer. You'll hear about the time I couldn't get past a guard dog when I was burglarizing a house. I went to jail so many times that my brother told my mother I was doing it on purpose. <laughs> An OG gangster told me in the streets one day, you're too sensitive for crime. You gotta be born with this. I often think that if my heart had been just a little bit colder, I would have stayed back there and I would have died there in the streets. Yeah. Maybe you can tell from the subject matter. Writing this book wasn't easy for me. From when I was a little boy, I saw fucked up shit. Shootings, ODs, rats attacking babies. That still gives me nightmares. Mm. And I feel guilty for being alive when so many of my friends are dead, buried back in Indianapolis in Crown Hill Cemetery. Mm. My time hasn't come yet. I'll see them again. But why did I live and they didn't? I went to a therapist once years ago when I was starting out in show business. She said, what makes you different from other people, Mike? What makes you special? I shrugged. I didn't have an answer for her then. Now I do. I get my strength from nap time. Being from there makes me special. And what makes me different? I got out. The thumbs up button, guys. Appreciate you guys watching. Archangel Michael. Cornfields, Hoosiers, the Speedway, Lake Michigan, Notre Dame. That's what you think of when you think Indiana, right? But in the center of that state, slap in the middle of the biggest city, shit gets real. Being a black man in Indiana, it ain't no joke. I'm from Naptown, not Indianapolis. We call it Naptown. Mapleton Fall Creek, a couple miles north of the city center, was my neighborhood. I've always thought of it as a place designed for people like me to fail. Where I lived for a lot of my childhood was around Central Avenue, Ruckle, Carrollton and 21st, Carrollton and 33rd. Dirty third, we called it. In the 1950s, black people with decent jobs moved to Mapleton for the trees and the big-ass houses. Four or five bedrooms, sand basements, a lot of house for your money. It was a nice, black, middle-class neighborhood. By the time the 1970s came along, a lot of the place was on fire. Wow. There were tore-down houses, empty lots. You could walk down one street and see through to the next street over. The blocks looked like they had missing teeth, know what I'm saying? Some of the houses had full families, though mostly it was single moms with their kids. There were still some middle-class people here and there. The rest of us were so poor, we thought anyone with a color TV and a car that ran was ready for lifestyles of the rich and famous. I was born Michael Elliott Epps on November 18, 1970, at a city hospital called Methodist. And boy, the way my family tells it, I came out struggling. I had the umbilical cord wrapped tight around my neck so tight it almost killed me. I was a vegetable <laughs> wow. for a little bit. Maybe that explains why I'm a little crazy. Shit. <laughs> Even though I was born so small and so blue, my mom fought for me from the first second. Don't you give up on him, she yelled at the doctors. Look, he's still alive. We're going to give Michael a chance. It took a couple of days there, but I came around. See, my mom said to anyone who would listen, I told you all he's a fighter. That's when I got my reputation for being a survivor. To this day, my mom likes to say I had two birthdays. The first was the day I was born. The second was when I opened my eyes and looked around and everyone started to believe that I might live after all. That's my mother, Mary Reed. Miss Reed to you. 
most beautiful woman in the world. One of those women everyone just wants to be around. Always popular with men, for sure. A great cook. Also, I get my humor from my mother. She is the funniest woman in the world. She's got this sarcasm about herself, you know? And she kept the family going no matter how bad things were. And things got bad as hell, as you'll see. My mom... Hmm. For I mean, more than that, man. that was pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, I forgot what year she passed on. Did she? I know. Oh, you know what? That was Dion. Cole. Dion Cole. Mom passed away last year, and I think Mike Epps' mom might have passed away. I think during the pandemic or before the pandemic, because I remember him talking about it. Um, yeah, man, that's a that's something, man. When you lose your mom, you know, I lost my mom, and that's. That, it, man, when you lose your mom, especially if you're close to your mom, that, that stuff feels like it really feels like your world is coming to an end. You know, it's a very excruciating pain. You know, I don't even like to, to even, you know, I mean, I'm over it now, but it's just into that. When you that from you first learn, it's like, wow, it's wow, very, very interesting pain that you feel. But, uh, yeah, it's an interesting book, man. He gets more deep and deep in. To his life and you know how he got into crime and got out of crime and got into comedy you know i like mike Epps. i just saw him too the other day at the uh tupac um star over in hollywood that was uh, like last week or a week and a half ago you know cool dude cool guy uh, anyway what y'all think uh leave your comments and subscribe to charles on israel appreciate it